Hello friends, my name is Kate, this is Porter, and today we're going to review The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis. So The Queen's Gambit just recently came out on Netflix a few weeks ago as a series. I think it's got about seven episodes. And as soon as I saw the trailer, I was immediately interested in the storyline. The trailer opens up with a girl about to go beast at a chess tournament. And you can just tell that the show is going to be so badass and have so much girl power. But what I didn't know was that it was actually a book first and the book came out in the 1980s. I had totally never heard of it before. So I decided that I wanted to read the book before I watched the show. I actually listened to The Queen's Gambit as an audiobook on Audible because they had it totally for free with my Audible subscription. So if you want to check that out while Audible has it for free, just look at the link down below and I will link you to Audible and then it should be included with your Audible membership. As an audiobook, The Queen's Gambit came in at about 11 hours and it was really good the whole way through. The start of The Queen's Gambit opens up with an eight-year-old named Beth Harmon whose parents have just died in a car crash. She's sent to an orphanage and there she starts playing chess with the janitor in the basement. In today's time that would be super super sketchy but it was all totally harmless and Beth quickly finds out that she is just a natural at playing chess. After she plays with the janitor, she can lie in bed at night and visualize all of the different chess moves that she did make, that the janitor made, or that she could have made to make her game even better. From there, we follow Beth Harmon's life as almost a coming of age tale, but it's told through the mind of a genius, basically. I don't like giving away too many spoilers when I do reviews, but we follow Beth as she gets adopted, how she grows her chess game and becomes even better and better, and then as she starts competing in these chess tournaments all over the world. So I know a book about chess can sound a little boring, and Walter Tevis definitely writes heavy on the technicality side as well. So a lot of times when you're reading, there will actually be sections of the book where it's like, bishop moved to queen's pawn four and then the rook uh, castled with the king and then the pawn took and it can seem very daunting especially if you don't know a lot about chess but when i started the book i had never really played chess i knew the very very basics of which pieces can move to which positions and like which way they can move on the board but other than that i didn't know anything about chess but Tevis did such a great job of writing it that not only was I super into the book, I was like, oh snap, that bishop just took that pawn. But it actually made me want to go play chess after I would finish listening to the book. So since then, I've actually downloaded a chess app on my phone and have started playing in my free time. And I think that just really goes to show how great of a job the writer did in telling the story. If it can take a subject that I had very, very little interest in to start with, and it actually made me want to research and improve my skill uh, with chess of all things, like I think that just goes to show that he did a really, really excellent job of uh, telling you a story and keeping you engaged, even with it being a little more on the technical side sometimes. There's also a super deep personal and emotional connection that you feel with Beth. So it's not all uh, just chess terms and boring droning ons of games the entire time. Beth grows up as an orphan and while she was living in the orphanage, they were giving the kids tranquilizers every day like a vitamin. Beth seems to have an addictive personality. So starting off with tranquilizers in the orphanage leads to a whole slew of dependencies and addictions and obsessions that she has as she's growing up. So The Queen's Gambit just did an excellent job of tugging on your heart emotionally as well as just keeping you super involved in the competitive edge that Beth has while she's playing chess. I gave The Queen's Gambit four out of five stars on Goodreads and I would absolutely recommend this book. As an audiobook, I did struggle with the narrator's voice at the beginning. The the narrator that I got just seemed to have like a really, really droning on robot voice and it took me a little bit of time to, to get used to that and kind of move past that. So I might even recommend that you try reading this book yourself instead of an audiobook, but I was able to move past that in the long run. So maybe just try a sample of the audiobook first just to see if her voice bothers you or if it's something that you can easily look past. Now that I finished the book, I'm also planning on watching the show, so if you guys have either read the book or watch the show leave some comments down below and let's talk about it 
All right, guys, that's all we had for you today. So remember to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.